The management, hey all, my wife and a male coworker coordinated costumes together from the same movie. The rest of her coworkers had different movie characters. No one else coordinated from the same movie. I've had suspicions of something going on with my wife but not sure with who. She has very little free time as we have two toddlers. Although I work shift work and she would be available on when I'm on nights. She has one hour lunch breaks and he live close by. Should I be worried? I have never seen a single piece of evidence. She had gone out last minute a few times with friends and it seems to check out. She sent me pics of their work photos. One of just them two together. Would she be that bold? Or harmless friends at work. Have looked on computer and emails but reviled nothing. Phone is Apple so searching spotlight show text messages too. Still nothing. Her phone is usually pretty tight to her but will leave it around for briefly. She doesn't get too concerned I look through it. Never leaves it alone too long. It may just be my paranoia. The marriage has been rough since we had kids. Bonding has dwindled. Could just be because of the kids. Never doubted her before the kids. Around a year after kids, she would throw out comments that I was cheating or that I would in a joking fashion. Seemed weird but got me suspicious. Two years later I still wonder. He only started a year ago so that doesn't exactly line up. I am thinking of doing a phone recovery with phone lab but know she will be alerted when I use her Apple ID. She doesn't leave her phone around enough to just run it on it. I could cancel the alert from her computer but not sure if it still goes to the iPhone as well. I haven't ever seen them text. Spotlight showed maybe four conversations for working together over a year. Hasn't switched jobs much. Also engaged. We started counseling on my accord. She was hesitant at first. She says that I'm the problem. It's all in my head. She walks all over me in arguments and I've had enough. She says she is happy but I'm not. How can she be happy if she knows I'm not? She works in a large place. Her department did a group theme with wife and coworker being love interests. My phone records only show times and no numbers. Nothing else really. Can only see if lots of texts were made and I know they weren't me. Not sure if that says anything. She sent me pictures of the group and also just them two together. Update. No cheating as far as I know. The big problem with us is whenever I bring something up, she gets defensive and goes on the attack. I eventually shut down and stonewall her. I stay upset much longer than she does. Then I am very hesitant to take another beating in an argument. The arguments don't seem to bother her much at all as she controls the outcomes of them. No ownership, tigress, eggshells all happening. I am usually the one that initiates bonding. The time she does is usually a couple days after she turns me down. She has started initiating more in the last month or so since I've brought up wanting more bonding. She said one to two times a week was doable. I said I wanted three to four times a week. She laughed. So, we compromised and are doing it one to two times a week. I'm trying not to just focus on the negatives. I need to tell her praise for all that she does which is a lot. Dates haven't been all that frequent. Last one was not great as she was on her phone most of the time. Did not like me bringing that up. The fact that she says she is happy when I say I am not as tough to get by. I don't understand how she can be happy knowing I'm not. She was texting the babysitter about the kids a few times which was one of her friends. So, they were probably chatting more than the regular babysitter. She was also on FB a few times. Three years later, I've suspected of an affair for some time with her co-worker but I believe my wife is a covert narcissist and is gaslighting me. Monday night I noticed that she shaved and also just came off her period. Tuesday she oddly had a shower right after work when I took my kids for a bike ride. When I noticed she said it's because she wasn't feeling well and pooped her pants a bit during a walk at lunchtime. She told me not to bring it up again and that she had to throw her underwear out. Right after supper she did laundry which also seemed odd. I checked all the garbage and no underwear. The next morning, I noticed stained underwear hanging to dry. The stain was in the front not the back and looked more like blood stains. So, I turned on Google Maps tracking but I couldn't find yesterday's history. It's just blank. So, this morning I added myself to her shared Google Maps location and can see her location and with some lag at times. I don't know where the co-corker lives but it's very near their work. They get one hour lunch breaks and he go home every day. Should I try and catch them at lunch break or wait for more evidence? I'm pretty certain she will deny it unless I have lots of evidence. I don't know if I can wait on a PI next week will be the earliest. Don't know if I can keep it together for a week. She will likely want to sleep together next week when I get off nights. Don't think I'll be able to. I haven't slept the last two days. I will book the PI as a PI have a recorder in her car today. I haven't found anything on her phone. I notice she always positions herself away from me when using. Not sure how I would track her iPhone other than using Google Maps. I want to be sure for me. I will be blamed for the divorce. PI will be 15 per day. No way of knowing if they get anything either. Would like to find his address first and see if they both show up. This will likely be the case. Pictures of him going in. Her going in later. Same when they leave. Not sure what the court needs for burden of proof. I really want to expose this with more than that. Pretty sure they only sleep together during lunch breaks. Not far from work. His wife is a nurse and likely shift worker as am I so, it will make it tough for a PI to get lucky when she is working. 
Google Maps showed her in the area of his house for lunch today. I saw her van parked on the street. I am going to get the PI to get the address to confirm. Then hire PI. It hasn't been three years of PI work here. We've had ups and downs. She is very clever and good at gaslighting. My eyes started to open when I Google walking on eggshells. Read up on covert narcissists. Before I couldn't believe someone would go to these great lengths to cheat. But now I can see it. Also, I have been seeing a therapist about this. OMW. I don't have her number so it would have to be a Facebook request or something like it. She could blow up any chance of getting evidence by talking to him about it and not finding anything. My comment. This rather changes things somewhat. Now it does appear your wife is cheating. I would not advise that you contact this jerk's wife until you have good evidence otherwise you could get sued for defamation or even be letting know you're onto them. Would it be possible for you to take a week off of work, hire a car so as your wife doesn't know it's you and stake out the wife yourself? Make sure you take a decent video device with you. Certainly, cheaper than hiring a PI, especially considering you suspect this is mostly happening during your wife's lunch times. If you do see your wife going in and out this jerk's home more than once then knock on his door when your wife is there, pretend to be a policeman and want to talk with him. Then barge in catching your wife in the act, videoing the event, and you will have your proof. OP responds, I like the rental car idea. I would like to get a GPS for her car as it's not walking distance. They wouldn't likely take the same vehicle as it would cause suspicion of co-workers. Oddly they seem bold enough to do it when I'm on days off during the week. On Tuesday I brought coffee and donuts into work in the morning and I'm pretty sure they had slept together at lunch. The stained on these day. Should I send away her underwear from yesterday? It will likely have stuff. Or would losing them tip her off? I want more evidence for myself so I don't look back and say I was paranoid. I know what's happening. I have a VOC in her car and one in the bedroom. No proof yet. The Google timeline that's not even working properly for some reason emailed her two days after I enabled it. She then flagged the email. I also shared her Google location with me. Today she turned off Google location. I would like to share her location with Find iPhone but can't afford another email or notification. I'll get a GPS for the vehicle. Could someone test sharing location on Find iPhone and let me know of any notifications? I have an Android so I am not the best with these. She also has an Apple Watch so I'm not sure what notifications get sent there. It would be better if it notified immediately. I could then acknowledge and delete them. Didn't expect Google to wait so long to notify the change. I found that Google will send an email notifying that you're sharing your location with one person me. Not sure if that happened but if it did and she hasn't said anything to me about it. So, I got the co-worker's address and she was not there on Thursday like I thought. I do feel like it could just be paranoia but my gut is saying something is up. Google sent another email of Friday about sharing location with me but it was unread this time. Not sure if she saw it or not. I deleted it. Said it. She turned off location on Google. She has said nothing about this. My comment. Your relationship is broken. What do you need to have to walk away? How far are you willing to go to try and fool yourself into thinking you can or it is even worth getting back? I look at the P I think as if my girl had so little trust in me that she paid a P.I. to spy on me and having found nothing I would think it is over. I can't tell if your wife is a cheater as we have only your side of the story to go on, but we can give you some light on what are the types of things that a cheating wife does. Washing her knickers is not one of them and having a stain on them and not part of it. But spying and doing your P.I. think on her knickers sounds like it is time to walk away. If she can't tell you the truth about what happened it shows there is a breakdown. When something is not right, it is time to put it right without running around spying on each other. Story 2. My wife and I have likely never been truly emotionally connected. We've always been great friends, seldom fight, have no money issues, but I've been unable to give her the emotional connection she needs. She has brought up this emotional disconnection many times over the years, but we've never done anything about it. Neither of us said we need to get marriage counseling. I've always done what my brain thinks is best, acts of service love language. And that's appreciated and noticed, but not what she needs. I'm a very independent person and any friendships I had in the past have degraded, not sure why I let them go. I noticed this and wanted to start to turn that around, but it's hard as I've worked from home for at least 15 years, and also the COVID isolation. I'm trying to reconnect with old friends. We are polar opposites on the political spectrum, so the last four years have been very tough. I keep my mouth shut on political topics, while she is quite vocal. I'd rather not of the argument. Also, difficult to separate out the actions of our current president from the underlying principles on each side. I'm waiting for an appointment with a counselor to start working on myself to learn how to open up. We are in a holding pattern on marriage counseling due to lockdown and little children ears that are around all the time, trying to figure out ways to improve my situation. Each night after the kids go to bed, we retire to separate bedrooms. I'm not wanting to have a big sit down and say, let's fix this, but instead want to learn figure out more about myself and how to make that connection she needs in hopes of bringing us closer. Married for 14 years, separate bedrooms for most of the time. She's a very light sleeper and I snore badly. 
We tried spending time watching a new TV series after kids go to bed, but that stopped. Also, I believe she's checked out of the relationship. She is willing to do couples therapy at a later date, but she seems to just have accepted things are the way they are and aren't going to change. I think I need to make some level of improvement in our engagement before I try to make a leap. Also, she's going through some bodily pains right now, so I believe it would come off as insensitive. Not trying to make excuses. The open marriage discussion happened in May during lockdown. We agreed we need counseling. I've taken matters in my own hands and am starting individual counseling via Zoom from my car in some parking lot so kids don't hear. We will still need counseling, but if I can do some self-discovery of how I got where I am, work on my communication, etc. maybe that'll make couples counseling go better. I understand I might already have an open marriage and will deal with that bridge if, when it comes up, I don't want to go there yet, as I want help on how to handle it. Wanting change, I think twofold. Tired of feeling alone, thinking about my future, where does this go if left unchanged? Snoring, it's not apnea, had a septiplicity to open things up. Other options are mouth guard or a roto-rooter of the back of my throat. Messaging noted and we'll start showing some action. Yes, we do talk about our days and funny little things here and there. I think there is a fair amount of emotion, resentment tied up politics and my lack of strong, vocal opinions on the current state of affairs. Touch, we'll try to get us hanging out after kid bedtime and see what I can do. I do love my wife. Always have. I'm amazed at the work and dedication she has in being a mother. Always have been attracted to her. It comes up about once every year for many years. I know. She does not work outside the home. Why now? I've looked forward and saw how this plays out. Call me naive, call me stupid if you want. That's where we're at. I'm prepared to plan for what happens later, but would really like for us both to give it one last stab. I think mentally preparing for what happens later is what really got my attention. All we've done in the past is said it's a problem. I'm aware of what might be going on and will deal with that when it comes up. I'm willing to accept some level of previous infidelity based on my inaction in the past if at some point we can turn things around and find a way to ensure it doesn't happen again. For now, I'm working on the barrier in front of me. Politics and the general party affiliation I've applied to myself are a barrier for her. I started looking at the issues that various political beliefs map to one of the many political views to start to foster discussion on the hot topics. Well received so far. A few weeks later, I believe she has already had an active relationship, but she still denies it. She admitted flirting and opportunity, but messages show more. I haven't found her talking to that partner, just several references to that other partner. I don't know if there is any benefit to going further to try to prove that. Other than being right, it might do more harm than good. I'm trying to wrap my head around what to do next until we can get into marriage counseling, deferring till kids can get past COVID virtual schooling, with the goal of finding out how to move forward as a family. Obviously other options are, live together as friends, divorce, reconcile, or something else. I don't want to hear kick her to the curb. I won't do that. I'm currently stuck on why can't we try to fix the marriage we have. To me, life sure feels a lot easier to live in the traditional constructs. A man, a wife, kids in a home, all acting as one unit. To her, she feels that we only have a marriage on paper, which is fair, and she's too far checked out to even try. She can't see that a man, a woman, kids in the home plus another woman and another man stealing time from the mom, dad, kids will be a challenge. I just don't see how those other relationships could be fulfilling without impacting the parent, kid relationship. She seems to want to just be nice to each other for the kids. I'm trying to talk myself into that. We do not fight around the kids. We really don't even fight when kids aren't around. We're more in the butting heads section of what we want. Our problems stem from frustration of our current state and come out in small outbursts of frustration. Kids also see me as disconnected, sad, angry, when I'm processing things, usually around the depth of her extramarital activities. I've started counseling for myself, just to help me get level set. But that only comes once a week. I think I just need to say marriage counseling will come later. What happens in that counseling, we'll figure out later, suck it up and ignore what I know, expect is going on, and be nice. It's hard, but that's what brings normalcy to our kids. They need that right now. We've both done that for years. I have faced reality, trying to figure out where to go next. I feel like I've been hit by a truck. Our goal in marriage counseling is to figure out if we stay together for the kids and negotiate how that works, or by some long shot, resolve things. But I've been trying to resolve things in what I now see as a one-sided discussion. Right now, she's not even willing to go there and have that discussion. In her eyes, she was done years ago and has been hanging on for the kids and supposedly not having an extramarital relationship out of respect for me. Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure I'll find the real truth right now. I expect that when we eventually do get to marriage counseling that there will be more things piled on that she needs to admit to. I think marriage counseling will really turn into joint counseling on how we find some way to continue living together for the kids. I have my doubts on how that plays out. And she doesn't have any good answers. I don't have high expectations on how that feels. 
I questioned what kind of relationship you can build outside of this home without being too distant from your children's lives. You're trying to be around for your kids, do things as a family. How much quality time are you going to have with that other person? Decorate the Christmas tree. Thanksgiving. Just boggles my mind. I'm not making any immediate life decisions. Just trying to get myself to a place where I can cope for the time being until we can get some form of group counseling. I'm not going scorched earth on what I think she's been up to. Have evidence but it's veiled enough that she could possibly talk it down. When I told her, I assumed the worst was happening she turned it back on me. I know it's not on me. Just tired. Our kids are schooling from home. I don't see how we have a highly emotional counseling session and then come out of the bedroom say, hi kids, and the risk of them hearing. I do individual counseling in from a parking lot in my car. And, I don't think she would do marriage counseling right now if we could. I know that's very telling. My comment, your wife gets to dine on cake, must be sweet. You get to dine on crap sandwich. Might I add, can't get enough mustard for that either. At least you're setting a good example for your kids of what not to do. Hope they'll get it. You don't need therapy, you're living in hell and will only deteriorate from here. This is from living under the hell of self-enforced limbo. You can get yourself out of this by divorcing her. Once you make this decision, you will heal. Until then, your mental state will only deteriorate. Story 3 So, when we met in college, I was 19 he was 20 we were both sophomores. He was on the football team and was 6 feet 4, 220 pounds of solid muscle. I was 5 feet 3 and under 100 pounds and involved in several dance groups and on the intramural volleyball team. We were both in really good shape. Not so much now. FYI I'm now 48, 49 in January, and he'll be 50 in April. Fast forward more than 25 years and two boys, older teens, later. He's up to almost 400 pounds with 70 of that being just in the past 5 years. He looks really unhealthy. His face is so chubby you can barely see his eyes and his glasses don't sit properly. And it's because he never does anything the past few years but work a desk job and play video games, watch sports when he's home and eat a ton of junk food. He used to travel all the time and was fairly active until he busted both knees in an accident about 5 years ago and they didn't heal properly. Now he only travels a few times a year and not at all since lockdown. And currently at 170 pounds, down from a high of 190, gained most of it since 2012, when I was sitting around 130, which is when I was diagnosed with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and started taking steroids that made me gain weight and that make it almost impossible to lose it again. I do intermittent fasting. I only eat during an 8-hour window each day. I'm on a really strict diet with almost no sugar, carbs, and I still dance and go hiking as much as my constantly aching joints and muscles will allow. I also have days when I'm in so much pain that I can barely get out of bed. I'm on disability because of my health issues but I do run an online antiques and clothing consignment store that takes up a lot of my time and allows me to contribute to our household financially. Last December both of us were given wake-up calls by our family doctor. My husband is developing type 2 diabetes and high cholesterol and is heading for a massive heart attack. Doctor wants him to lose 200 pounds. I was told for the sake of my already damaged joints and my heart that I need to lose between 50 to 70. Doctor also told both of our sons that they need to start watching their weight as well. They're each around 6 feet tall and both right around 200 pounds. After this, all four of us made a pact that we would go all out to lose the weight as a family. At that point my husband finally also opened up to me that the reason we never had slept together anymore and he was always watching porn was because he no longer found me attractive due to my weight gain. When he had gained a lot more and I'd never let it affect our physical life even though I haven't found him attractive since he hit about the 280 mark which was at least 15 years ago now. Now he's pushing me constantly about my diet. If I have a bad day due to my health issues, he yells at me because I sleep too much. He wants me to try going off the steroids knowing I need them to ease the symptoms from the lupus and raw. He keeps telling me how much more seriously he is taking this than I am. And yet, in the past 12 months, I have managed to drop 20 pounds from my starting weight of 190 last December. Yeah, I was shooting for 50, but with the steroids that was unrealistic. And he hasn't lost any weight at all, in fact I think he may have gained. The boys are at least making an effort to not gain more weight even though they aren't losing either. No sports at school due to lockdown and all gyms in our state being closed isn't helping them. We don't have enough room in our apartment for them to work out here. But here's the kicker and what brought me to this site. Today I found out he's been cheating on his diet big time and hiding it from me. We have a rented storage unit that our entire family shares to store crap we aren't ready to get rid of yet even though we probably should. I went over there today while my husband and the boys were at my in-laws watching football because I couldn't locate an item I had sold on Facebook Marketplace and I was hoping it would be in the storage unit. I hadn't been there in a while and when I opened it up the stench was insane. And in the back corner, buried under a pile of ruined carpets my MIL should really trash, I found several huge garbage bags that were absolutely full of food trash. Fast food containers, pizza boxes, Chinese bento boxes, 
takeout boxes, potato chip bags, candy bar wrappers, soda bottles, cigarette wrappers, he supposedly quit three years ago. Receipts that prove that he's been buying this stuff right along, and, I would assume, eating it in his truck, which we never use as a family. And yes, I know it's his and not another family member's because the receipts were all for his debit card which no one else uses. I am so angry, not to mention disgusted. I have been depriving myself of all my favorite foods since last Christmas and this is what he has been doing behind my back while complaining that I'm not losing weight fast enough. And he hides the crap instead of bothering to dispose of it which is just plain lazy. He and the boys are still over at my in-law's house and I'm sitting at home alone debating how to confront him. I am just fuming. I don't know how I'm even going to get through the night so that I don't go off on him in front of the boys but I really want to wait until they go back to school in the morning. I honestly don't recall ever being so angry in my entire life. I can't believe the verbal abuse he has shelled out over the past year because I'm not losing fast enough, when he quite obviously wasn't even trying. I know I need to calm down so I can handle this without completely losing my crap on him but at this point I honestly am so upset I don't even want to be here when they get home. If it weren't for my boys, I'm not sure I would be. I really, really need some advice on how to handle this, because at this point, I don't even know where to start. I have to assume he has some kind of food addiction but how can I help him if he's just going to hide it from me? He's not the type to see a mental health counselor, in fact he mocks me because I do see one on a bi-weekly basis to deal with my depression and anxiety issues. He doesn't really believe that mental health issues are real, he just thinks they are excuses for poor behavior, which makes me think confronting him about this is going to go nowhere. And yet I have to confront him because at this rate he is going to drop from a heart attack before too much longer. Oh yeah, and on top of all this, we just had a huge fight over Thanksgiving because I caught him letting our boys watch X-rated movies with him while they thought I was sleeping, which really pissed me off. He doesn't need to be handing his porn habit down to our sons. Quite honestly, I'm really starting to wonder if I still want to be in this marriage. Problem is, I love my kids, and if I leave, I know they'll choose to stay with him, because he's the fun one who lets them do whatever they want and buys them everything they ask for. I don't want to leave because I don't want to lose my boys. And mark my words, they would choose him. He's fun, he makes most of the money, he plays video games with them, and apparently watches porn with them. He lets them do whatever they want and rarely disciplines them except over poor grades. And because they are 16 and 18 years old, they would be allowed by the courts to make that decision. Even if I do decide to leave it won't be until they're both in college. Of course, at this rate he could be gone by then. They're 16 and 18 years old. It's a little late to change the influence he's had on them. And they would stay with him if I left him. They wouldn't even have to think about it before they made the choice. He believes throwing money around is the answer to every problem which makes him a dream parent to two boys who own every video game system on the market because he never says no. 16-year-old will be 17 in January and that's the age of consent in my state so I'm not sure if the court would care if he's watching porn. He'll be old enough to legally move out on his own so I really don't think they can tell him where to live. I did put parental controls on our cable TV after this went down and I'm the only one who knows the password so there won't be any more of it. As far as finances are concerned, I'm assuming you mean if he dropped to the floor. If that's the case, it would actually be to my benefit. He's got a 3 million life insurance policy. And I'm the only beneficiary on it right now. It's costing him a small fortune due to the weight but it has to pay out for any cause other than X himself. But I haven't reached the point yet where I want him gone, and I hope I never reach that point. As I mentioned, I have lupus and raw. I also have a heart defect that I was born with that is inoperable. Both lupus and raw are genetic, multiple people in my family have them including my sister and in fact lupus killed my uncle, and I'm already on an extremely strict diet. Problem is my meds have destroyed my metabolism and steroids cause weight gain. I was a stable 130 pounds for years before I started the steroids 8 years ago, and I have dropped 20 pounds in the last year mostly through low carb and intermittent fasting. I exercise when I can, but my knees are so messed up some days I can't even walk. My husband does have a life insurance policy and it's worth 3 million. He makes pretty good money although he hasn't hit seven figures quite yet. The insurance company has to pay out on any cause other than X himself. We also have a lot of money in savings, retirement accounts, and the stock market. So, I'm not worried about finances. My husband puts very little value on anything other than making money. You might be right that he no longer respects me, and probably it's because for the last eight years I've been on disability and contributing very little to our family finances. The first several years of our marriage I actually made more than he did and in fact I put him through his master's degree and gave him the financial backing to break into the career he wanted. We were in our mid-30 seconds before he started out earning me. Then I got sick and couldn't work anymore and he started spending more and more time at work and playing video games and not so much time with me or the boys. Sometimes I think he almost hates me for getting so sick. My sister has the same health issues as I do and her husband left her over it. I've often wondered if mine has considered doing the same. 
I've wondered if he only stays because he knows with his weight issues, he would be hard-pressed to find anyone else who would want him. After thinking over my options for almost a week, I finally confronted my husband about it and he totally broke down, cried for hours, told me how he hated himself and what a loser he was and admitted he's thought about X himself a lot the past few years. It all ended up with him deciding to check himself into a psychiatric treatment center, and the center also has an addiction treatment clinic that will be helping him with his food and porn issues. He'll be there for 30 days with no outside contact allowed for the first two weeks, he's been there for about a week now. After that two weeks we'll start doing family counseling sessions via Zoom. After the 30 days his treatment team will reevaluate if he can come home yet. I've been told it's pretty rare to keep people any longer than that. But until he comes back home, I honestly have no idea where we're going to go from here. Having him gone has made it really clear to me how miserable we've both been lately and I am starting to think I do want a divorce. It's so much calmer at home with him gone and much to my surprise the boys don't even really seem to miss him. In fact, my older son made a comment to me that his dad has been acting so immature that he felt like he had an older brother rather than a father lately. My sons also agree with me that when we finally get to talk to my husband again, we should all gently push him to have bariatric surgery if he medically qualifies for it. I'm hoping his treatment team is already talking to him about it, but if not, I'm going to ask them to once we start taking part in the family counseling sessions. Well, we had our first Zoom counseling session yesterday. Just me and my husband, the boys weren't in on this one and it's a good thing. Because the bomb he dropped is that he's attracted to men and he's been hiding it from himself and from everyone else pretty much his entire life. He thinks he's bi because he obviously likes women as well, but he's been dealing with years of being ashamed of his attraction to men, strict Catholic upbringing. And he's been eating to cope with it. His counselor says that once he comes home, we're going to have to decide whether or not to simply divorce or if I'm willing to let him explore his other side within the marriage. I already told my husband I don't want to consider either until the boys are both in college. He says he can live with that because it will give him time to work on the diet the treatment center has given him, because he knows he'll never manage another relationship anyway at his current weight. He's also being tested to qualify for bariatric surgery, but they're really concerned that he might not survive the surgery because his weight has seriously weakened his heart. Apparently, they've got him on a really strict diet already at the center. He's already dropped 10 pounds in a little over two weeks, although it's probably mostly water weight. At least it's a start. I'm going to be starting individual counseling after the first of the new year. I tried to get something earlier, but no one is seeing new clients right now. I need to figure out how I feel about the idea of him potentially being with other guys while still staying married. It doesn't sit well somehow. What's the point of being married if you're no longer attracted to each other and one of you no longer wants to be monogamous? I honestly have no interest in being in another relationship, but I don't have much interest in this one anymore either. One of the things I loved about us is that we were both virgins when we got together. Neither one of us has even so much as kissed anyone else much less had slept with other people because we both grew up in strict households where we weren't allowed to date in high school. We were each other's first and only relationship and that's a big deal to me. The thought of actually giving him permission to be with other people makes me kind of sick. I know if he did sleep with someone else, I'd never be able to sleep with him myself ever again. I can't help but think if he really is bi, I'd be doing him a favor to just let him go because I don't think I can deal with a non-monogamous marriage. Has anyone here successfully opened up a marriage for just one spouse while the other chose to stay faithful? I don't think I'd have a problem living without bonding. He has asked me to pack up most of his things as he has apparently already lined up an apartment to live in after he gets released. He does not want to come home. He feels the need to be free to decide what he is going to do apart from us influencing him. And I'm okay with giving him space, but our boys are very definitely not. They are hurt, angry, worried that this is going to mean they won't have a relationship with their father anymore. They are also very uncomfortable with the idea of their father being with other men, not because they have an issue with homo but because they don't understand how he could suddenly like men when he's been married to a woman for 26 years now. They are really struggling with the fact that he doesn't want to come home and live with us again, I think that's what hurts them the most. They've also made it very clear that they would rather not have us divorce even though I've made it clear to them it's not my decision to make, or at least not only mine. We're doing family counseling with my husband and one of his therapists via Zoom, but it seems to be causing more issues than it is helping. My younger son seems mostly hurt and angry that his father doesn't want to come home and be a family again. My older son also thinks his father is acting very immaturely and has been for a long time now. He told me not that long ago that he feels more like he has an older brother than a father lately, and honestly, I kind of agree with him. My husband chooses to marry me, a woman, and when he took those wedding vows, he made a choice to spend the rest of his life only having woman. I just don't know how to help my kids with this when I'm struggling with it just as much as they are. As I said, we're already doing family counseling, and I've suggested to both of the boys that they do individual counseling, but so far neither of them has been interested in doing so. They're both old enough, 16 and 18, that I'm not going to force it on them if they don't want it. My comment, 
Maybe he was overcompensating. Maybe he is an addict and it led him there. You may never know. I am not sure it matters. He is cheating and has abandoned his marriage and your kids. I think you need to start to move on. I am sorry.